Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update video. And so in this video, we will be talking about or disturbance that is off the coast of Africa, a tropical wave, and the possibility for it to develop and even become a named storm. And if it does, it will acquire the name Danielle. So is this future Danielle that we are looking at? And so before I go into details... And so we are starting off with a view of the Atlantic Basin, of course, and there are a few tropical waves that are moving across the region, but we're focusing on that one located off the coast of Africa. And so it is a marked disturbance, of course. And as of right now, it is given a medium 40% chance to possibly develop into a tropical cyclone during the next several days. And the National Hurricane Center states that this thing might become a depression maybe by the midweek. So we definitely want to look out for that. And in Imminent development of this is not expected. However, uh, once it moves into that shaded orange region, that is where we could see some development because conditions are expected to be generally conducive to enable that to happen. But uh, the chance has increased from yesterday because it was at 20% and now we have it being at 40%. So if it seems as though uh, these conducive conditions are going to be persistent enough to allow this to develop into a tropical cyclone, the chance is going to keep increasing for this system. But the formation chance to the next 48 hours is at zero percent right now but no tropical cyclone development is expected until about say the midweek and so are the major models still expecting something significant from this disturbance? So we're going to be taking a look at what they are expecting. But first, let us talk about all of that dry air, that Saharan dust. And so uh, as usual, we have the darker oranges going to the reds that indicate uh, more abundance in that dry air. And so we're seeing that we have quite a bit that is out there. Uh, but just beneath that massive dry air we do have all that shower activity and so the disturbance is going to be making its way mainly westward to west northwestward and so uh it is going to be encountering some of that Saharan dust eventually. And so for that reason, I'm not expecting that this is going to become something very uh, significant. But let us go ahead and see what the major models are expecting starting off with GFS. And so this is by Tuesday on the 9th of August. And GFS is expecting that by that time, we would have this system developing. And uh, remember that the National Hurricane Center is not expecting development during the next 48 hours. But GFS has shown that this is going to be making its way quickly in to more conducive conditions which would enable this to develop and so we're seeing a thousand five millibar low pressure system which is probably a tropical storm once it has that closed center of circulation and enough uh shower and thunderstorm activity then it would be classified as a tropical storm and also the 40 mile per hour winds let's not forget that as well all right moving on to friday the 12th of august gfs is showing that this is going to be intensifying uh to, uh, to a pressure of a thousand two millibars thereabout and compared to yesterday where they're expecting a minimum pressure of uh, 986 millibars I believe now they're showing a higher pressure about 987 millibars at peak which is a tropical storm of course maybe with winds of 60 miles per hour but I personally don't really think that there will be uh, intensification like this just because of all that dry air that is out there and so eventually by Tuesday the 16th of August uh, next week we are seeing that this thing here is really dissipating and not becoming anything so GFS is expecting that this is going to be a fish storm and is likely going to be missing the lesser entities but again things can change because we've seen it happen a lot so let us wait and see what's going to be happening with this system here so let's move on to euro now what is euro expecting so by Thursday, the 11th of August, Euro is showing that this wave is really going to be struggling to develop as it accelerates a bit to the northwest. And then going to Saturday on the 13th of August, uh, we're not seeing any organization with the system here. Those black lines, the isobars, we're not seeing them uh, really being compact to any point or anything like that like what the GFS is showing. So Euro is expecting that this is really going to be struggling. And again, all of that dry air. So let's go ahead and take a look at the humidity prediction for the next several days that the models are showing. So starting off with GFS, and this is by Wednesday, the 10th of August. And this might be confusing, but we're just taking a look at where we have that L and 1001 uh, value right there. And then those teals indicate 
moisture, which is what tropical cyclones need. Meanwhile, the browns indicate that uh, there is dry air and the whites show that things are pretty average, pretty normal. And so by Wednesday on the 10th, GFS is showing that this is going to be in a moist environment. However, moving to August 12th, we see that moisture is starting to decrease for the system and it's starting to weaken uh, as a result of all of the dry air that is going to be in. And then eventually by Saturday on the 13th, we have the model showing that this is going to become a much weaker system. Euro on the other hand now. So Euro is showing that we will have that low pressure system out there, as I said, but as it is going to be accelerating to the west or west northwest, we're seeing that it is going to be moving into those browns, which indicate the dry air. And with all that dry air, then uh, we will not see anything major become of this. And then eventually Saturday on the 13th, uh, Euro is really not expecting this to become anything significant. And so we definitely have to wait and see what is going to eventually happen, guys. But that is what our models are showing. And I, as I said yesterday, and I'm still saying it today, I'm going to be sticking with what the Euro is expecting. Uh, but I think that this might achieve a tropical depression status and even become a weak storm. And again, if it becomes a named storm, it will acquire the name Danielle. So we definitely have to wait and see what the eventual outcome for it is going to be but as for it being a threat to land the lesser antilles it looks as though this system is going to spare you if it develops so uh as i said things can change and we just have to keep watching what is going on out there all right and now i want to briefly talk about something else which is the enso or el nino southern oscillation and there are three phases of it the el nino phase the neutral phase and the la nina phase so in the el nino phase things are warmer than normal over the uh, pacific in terms of ocean temperatures and warmer waters result in more thunderstorm development more moisture and so in an el nino over the eastern pacific then we would have more tropical cyclone activity going Going on over there and that all that thunderstorm activity is going to increase the winter over the Atlantic basin and then that is why things are usually quiet in the Atlantic during an El Nino season and so with neutral and so that means that things are pretty normal neutral kind of means uh, not really El Nino not really La Nina just in between right there however with La Nina you can think of it as the opposite of an El Nino things are cooler than normal over in the Pacific which results in less interference for the Atlantic region and so let's go ahead now and take a look at this map looking at this sea surface temperature anomaly map right there where we have that blue section uh, going off the coast of South America and westward that is our Enso region and so we're seeing those blues and those blues are what are indicating that we are uh, having below normal sea surface temperatures which means things are cooler so we're in a La Nina and with this La Nina being persistent as we're going to be heading throughout the rest of the hurricane season, then it is likely that we're definitely going to be seeing some uh, major storms develop because it is going to be helping to uh, bring along some favorable conditions over in the Atlantic Basin where we would see intensification of our systems, guys. And so as of right now, uh, the latest value for the ENSO is minus 0.631. And once the value is beneath minus 0.5, then we are in a La Nina. So things are going on a downward trend. Things are getting a bit cooler over there. And so that is going to be aiding in tropical development as we head throughout the rest of the season. But as of right now, we just have that one tropical wave that is marked and it doesn't seem as though we will see anything else maybe within a week, but things can change. But of course, I'll be keeping you updated as time goes by. And so that is really it for this update. And if you found this video to be quite informative, please give a thumbs up and you can also share your thoughts in the comments or as a question. I'll try to respond as best and as I can. And of course, remember to always be weather wise.